So we're going to be looking at some genetic engineering basics today. You should be at station two if you're watching this. And um, you should have your genetic engineering and biotechnology basics notes. We're starting at the very beginning of those notes. So first of all, what is genetic engineering? Genetic engineering is the deliberate controlled manipulation of genes in an organism with the intent of making that organism better in some way. So that's a little bit confusing. So let's talk about what that means. So it's the deliberate. Deliberate means on purpose. Controlled manipulation. So that means that scientists are changing the genes on purpose. Um, and the reason they're changing genes on purpose is to make an organism better or to make it beneficial to us. And this is done independently of natural reproductive processes. So it would be considered genetic engineering if you had two dogs um, or horses, different animals like that, that you breed together on purpose to get certain traits. It's only genetic engineering if it's not um, a natural reproductive process. So a couple of things um, that you need to know about, about genetic engineering. First of all, recombinant DNA. So recombinant DNA, so if you look at that word, it kind of looks like the word recombination, right? So if you think about a recombination, it's kind of like a changing the combination of DNA. Um, so a recombinant DNA is cutting DNA from one organism and sticking it into another. And an example of that is the human gene that makes insulin is added to bacteria DNA, and then we can make that bacteria reproduce, um, and that bacteria is producing insulin, and that's actually how we make insulin for humans that have diabetes. So, in order to get recombinant DNA, we have to transform bacteria. So, we just said recombinant DNA is DNA that has um, DNA from different organisms in it. So, when we're trying to make recombinant DNA in bacteria, we have to go through this process called transforming. So there's a couple of steps that go with transforming bacteria. The first one is you're going to remove a plasmid from the bacteria cell. So the bacteria um, cells have this little piece of round DNA called a plasmid. Um, and this is good because this is really easy for us to remove, cut open, and then stick some extra DNA in it. And we're going to talk about how that happens. So the first step is you just remove the plasmid. The second step is that you're going to isolate the foreign DNA fragment. So that means you're going to pick out the DNA fragment that you want from some other organism and you're going to cut it out. So in this example, we're going to use our insulin example throughout kind of these notes. So in this example, um, you're taking a human cell and finding the gene for insulin in it. So once you've found it, then you're going to cut it. And we call that cleaving. So cleaving is when you cut DNA. So it's cutting the plasmid and the foreign DNA fragments. And how do you cut DNA? Well, obviously we can't have scissors or a knife to cut DNA. We cut DNA with these things called restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes just cut DNA at special spots. So, um, and they usually cut it and leave these little things that we call sticky ends. Right here. They kind of usually will cut it like this. So that then um, they're sticky in, so then it can stick together. And you'll see that this sticky end right here kind of matches this one right here. So then it's easy to put the bacteria and the human DNA together. Then we do something called splicing. And splicing is just when we put the foreign DNA, in this example, our gene for insulin, into our bacteria plasmid. So all of this right here is our original bacteria plasmid and then this right here is our foreign DNA. And we just stuck it in there. Alright, so 
a vector. A vector is just something that we use to deliver DNA into a host cell. Um, bacterial plasmid is an example of a vector. So when we want bacteria to be able to make insulin, we use the vector of a bacterial plasmid, um, and we make a recombinant, a recombination bacterial plasmid, and then we stick it back into the bacteria. Then when the bacteria reproduces, um, it pr actually produces that insulin that we want it to produce. Another type of vector, so one of them is biological, and that's like a bacterial plasmid, or we can also use viruses to do this. Um, and the second type is mechanical. And this is we use a gene gun, okay, this actually like, it just pushes genes into a cell. Or we can insert it with a micropipette, which is just a tiny, tiny pipette. Alright, so after we have cut the plasmid out, um, we've cut the plasmid, we've cut the um, piece of DNA that we want, we put the DNA into the plasmid, now we're ready to insert the DNA, the plasmid, back into the bacterial cell. And when we do this, this creates transgenic bacteria. So what is transgenic bacteria? Transgenic, so if you mean tr if you remember trans, trans means multiple or different, and genic stands for gene. So it's bacteria that contains genes from multiple sources. So just like transgenic bacteria means a means bacteria that contains genes from multiple sources, a transgenic organism is just any organism that contains genetic material from a different organism. All right, so the next step we're going to have in transforming our bacteria is cloning. And so we're just going to reproduce that bacteria. So every time that we reproduce that bacteria, it reproduces everything that's in it. And so it's going to reproduce that plasmid, too, that we just made. So when it reproduces that plasmid, then whatever that special DNA we just put inside of it gets reproduced over and over and over. And our last step is we get a DNA that produces the product. In our example that we've been using, our product was insulin. Here you can see that these are mice and they have um, been, in, some of them, these three, have had a glow-in-the-dark gene from a jellyfish entered into them. And so they glow in the dark. These three obviously haven't had the glow-in-the-dark gene entered into them. And so that's why they are not in the dark. So for the rest of these notes, you're going to go to your next station and take the notes, what can we use DNA technology for?